what we put into us is what we put out, right? You've probably heard that before. And if you want to reflect God, you need to understand what he says. <laughs> There's a meme I saw going around that's like, I'm waiting for God to talk to me. And a guy's like holding up a Bible and it's like, it's all here. This is God talking to you and wanting to speak to you. Hey there, and welcome to the Midweek Moment. Today, we are going to talk about community and culture on this episode. And we have Pastor Joanne, our executive pastor here, to lead us through this conversation on culture. Culture is something that you do. It's part of your role. Um, Talk to us about culture. Yeah, well, I think uh, anyone who's helping lead an organization has to be concerned about culture, right? Because culture drifts and um, you know companies come up with grand vision statements and value statements but if you're not continually um, fighting for that it'll shift and I think what we're learning through the pandemic is that things are shifting beyond our control right if maybe your company had a culture of like the nine to five at your desk like everyone's logging in well suddenly you've had the, you've had to shift culture because now you've got people saying well I only want to work from home um, or if you you know all those types of things I think every company is having to wrestle with and the same thing at the church we've had to reevaluate um, how we live out our culture in the middle of the pandemic what does it mean to gather together when we couldn't physically be together? What does it mean to worship God? Um, You know, all of those things you're constantly having to evaluate and instill both in your teams um, as well as reaffirming yourself. Like, I believe in this. This is what I'm a part of. So yeah, that's a little bit of what I've been able to do uh, this past year and focus on. So yeah, I think sometimes we underestimate the importance of culture and yet culture really drives i like to think of it this way culture answers the question how do we do things around here and culture drives a lot of that and so we see culture in sports teams in organizations in meeting rooms in businesses and restaurants and churches like you mentioned i think one area where perhaps we can overlook the importance of culture is in our families every family has a culture. And so how do we fight for maybe a Christ-centered culture in our families? Such a good question. And it's something I think every parent needs to be asking themselves. Who's going to um, dictate my child's or my teenager's future? Is it going to be the culture that is outside of our home or the culture that's inside the home? And I think we as parents have to remember that we get to set the pace for our child. Um, I'll give you an example. We um, were carpool buddies with a friend at school and we found out um, he was not Christian, actually came from a Muslim background. Um, And so my son, he came to this realization that not everyone he meets is Christian. And so we had to have conversations of what does it mean to be Christian? And we've had multiple conversations about just because one family allows let's say swearing or watching, you know, rated PG-13 movies doesn't mean that our family has those values. And so you as the parents, like you can set the tone for what you want your family values. And it doesn't have to be based on what's popular. It doesn't have to be based on others. But we, as our family, we've decided the word of God, that is our guide and that is our value. So we do devotions together. We talk about that. We talk about all the things we learn in the Bible and how that shapes our worldview. And so you have to fight for that because if you don't set the tone and fight for that, the culture outside of your home will dictate where your child ends up and they'll become a part of pop culture, right? Which is maybe not the culture that you want to see for your child's life. Yeah, that's so great. I just the importance of determining those values ahead of time versus reacting when something happens or something scares us. And so I really like uh, just that. You talked about values um, and how they closely influence or even make up our culture. Can you just speak to the connection and relationship right there? So our values, I would say, whatever we believe, um, it shapes the decisions we make. If we value, um, let's say we value privacy, 
um, then we're probably not going to share everything with everyone. Like if that means that whatever is happening between me and my spouse, I'm not going to talk about that everyone else. Um, if we value honesty, one of the things that's one of the things we value is we uh, we value honesty in our family. So with my son, like we would rather him if he's in trouble, be honest about what happened and he will get less in trouble than if he were to just try to hide it. So we try to prop up those types of values. And when we go values-based instead of just like rules, um, it dictates the culture. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so good. Now let's switch gears um, and talk about community for a little bit. Um, The way of God or the God's heart is for us to live in community. And you mentioned it in your message this past weekend, we live in such an individualistic culture and we're constantly having a battle against that because we're better together than alone. And that's how God wants us to live. Can you just talk about the impact of community in your life? Uh, Maybe past or present. And I know at New Break, one of our primary vehicles for community are our life groups. Can you just talk about the impact that, that that's had on you? Yeah, so I've always been part of a church that has had life groups, um, but nothing like what I've seen at New Break, the high value that is placed on life groups and authenticity and community. And I think it's so wonderful. And if I may share, like, I don't know that I've ever had anything that like what we strive for. Um, You know, I've been a pastor for the last 14 years. And probably like many Christian leaders, I feel this um, need to... um, always be presenting myself the best and so i found like even in small groups or bible studies i've been a part of like there i'd maybe give highlights of maybe what i was struggling with but not the whole thing um and i know here at new break we want people to just live real and be authentic and so i'm trying to find a new faith community find a new group of people here both my husband and i we deeply desire to be connected with others but it's scary i don't think anyone would say it's not scary to be vulnerable right like vulnerability is a super terrifying thing because what's that person going to do with the information and i felt the same way um But I'm curious, like, have you found that, you know, whether here at New Break or like, what has that been for you? I'd love to hear how you've connected because I've had a hard time finding that. Yeah, I think it's definitely been a a process of finding the the right tribe around you. And um, but the tribe that I've found, you know, we have this life group that meets on Thursdays. And we meet over Zoom because we have folks that live in San Diego. Uh, you know, Jim and Tammy, they live in Nevada. Um, just people scattered all over the U.S. But this has become our weekly tribe. And it's so cool just over the past year. We started in the beginning of the pandemic just being able to get to know each other. Um, and my favorite part about the group is when we meet at the end, we oftentimes end by sharing how we can be praying for each other. And it's through those requests that I've gotten to know, you know, Jim and Susanna and Melissa and their spouses and what's going on in their life and their kids' names and some of the struggles there. And we pray for each other. And then every week when we gather, our very first question is, hey, what's God been doing in your life? And I can point back to all the answered prayers that that's so cool jim you just shared that last week and now you're sharing how god has answered that prayer and that just builds this community and authenticity and when we're sharing like we're being vulnerable in the context of like prayer needs it's i feel like that's been easier to share because i do agree with you sometimes it's hard to feel safe right and be our true selves um but it's also a reminder that no community is perfect And if we're looking for the perfect community, well, I don't know if we'll ever find that on this (laughs) side of heaven, you know, and so at some point we just need to dive in and just give it a shot. And sometimes people will disappoint us, but the blessing of it is just so incredible. And so, and I'm more of an introvert. And so, you know, yeah, it takes a little bit of a push, you know, to branch out and be there on Thursdays, but it really is one of the highlights of of my week i'm like every time i get off the call i'm like kelsey honey i love my thursday people and so yeah that's awesome sometimes our our spouse helps push us into vulnerability right like hey are we going to talk about that exactly (laughs) i don't know if you've had that situation but but yeah let's talk about um the role of submission 
mutual submission um, this past weekend, we talked about how our relationships, the driving force is mutual submission. How does that play out um, in when there are two people that are opposites of one another? They say opposites attract, right? Yes, yeah. they do. Yeah, so my husband and I are pretty different. Um, we have a lot of similarities, but we're pretty different. Um, I'd say if, if you were to give either of us um, something to do, we would probably both do it very differently with very different outcomes. Um, but what I found is that when we combine together and we use our gifts together, we can actually help the other one maybe see things differently or look at things differently. Um, but there's definitely times um, where you know we just we have to kind of navigate that together where we're we're submitting to each other and maybe it's deciding something for our kids okay from based off of my experience and my giftings and my background this is what i think but then my husband also has his own unique perspective and background and recognizing to try to hear god's voice in that and try to come to an agreement is hard because we are different i think it's a wonderful gift um, to have someone different in your life. And I'd say there's no one in my life that speaks as much into everything that I do as my husband. Everything from stuff at church um, to parenting to my own personal growth and development as a Christian. My husband is my greatest advocate and encourager, but he's also very wise. And for me to not listen to him or to not hear, her, hear his perspective just because it's different than mine, I'm missing out on hearing possibly the voice of God. And many times it is the voice of God in my life. Now, not everything he says I'm going to apply or everything he says is going to fit my personality or my style, but I'd be wrong to say that the two of us shouldn't at least talk about it and I can hear his voice and his perspective. How about you guys? Yeah, I mean, we're very different, uh, Kelsey and I. Um, but to your point, you know, over the years, it's just I've been challenged personally to grow in an appreciation for her differences um, because I would do things a, a lot different. Um, my Enneagram is a I'm a one. And so, you know, for better or worse, ones are like, you know, we're going to do it and we're going to do it perfectly. And which means I'm always right, you know. Well, I think I'm right. She would say you're always wrong, but I think I'm right. And so just learning to hear somebody else's perspective and celebrate the fact that, you know what, she's going to think differently. She's going to do stuff differently. And that's okay. You know, and affirming her in those in those areas, I think is a is a big thing as well. So yeah, it's hard work. But it's so worth it. Because the blessing of marriage and relationships is just it truly is a blessing and it draws us closer to the heart of God. So, yeah. Um, at, before we wrap up our conversation, any practical tips on how folks who are watching and listening can begin setting a tone for just great culture, godly culture in their home? If there's two things they can do, what would those two things be? One, I mean, this is going to sound so basic, but one, read the word of God. What we put into us is what we put out, right? You've probably heard that before. And if you want to reflect God, you need to understand what he says. <laughs> There's a meme I saw going around that's like, I'm waiting for God to talk to me. And a guy's like holding up a Bible and it's like, it's all here. This is God talking to you and wanting to speak to you. And I think getting God's word in you, whether it's listening to the Bible on audio or through a devotional guide or coming to church or just continuing to fill yourself up with that, the word of God is powerful. It has the power to change you and change your life. And secondly would be prayer. This is going to, this is, it's similar because it's connecting with God, but it's different because if you will write and pray, write down maybe your prayers for what you're wanting. What culture do you want in your marriage? What culture do you want in your family? What culture do you want in your business? Write those things down and start to pray for them and allow God to speak to you about maybe things that are outside of the culture or give you wisdom about how to bring that culture or how to correct that culture. God is alive and active in speaking to us. And when we connect with his word, that's the foundation. But when we pray, God can answer our prayers and lead and guide us. That's so good. 
that's a good, really practical there. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this conversation. I hope you picked up a few tips that will hopefully challenge you to set some great culture, some great goals and values for your family. Your relationships are important, and God wants to use those relationships to draw you closer to Him. So if you like the content, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to this channel to get content just like this. Check out the weekend's message Uh, The link will be in the description down below. But we can't wait to see you for the next episode of The Midweek Moment. God bless you.